takes up on Quran and Hadith. So if someone gives a fatwa, a local person from here, and Nasrud Darbani, I'll believe Nasrud Darbani. If I don't have time, but if I say in the lecture, I check it up. What I say in the lecture, I check up. Because I'm responsible for that. But from my own knowledge, if I have to make opinion, I can't keep on checking every hadith. Difficult. Difficult for a layman. So, but to classify which group of scholars are you reading of? Which books are you reading? Whose books are you reading? Whose cassettes are you listening to? You classify them. Authentic scholar. This scholar makes 20% mistakes. This scholar 50%. This scholar 90% mistakes. You classify and then if you don't have time and belong to the first group of scholars which is authentic, you need not check up everything. If you have the time, it is the best. Do it. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. You don't have the time, yet you can. That's not called taklid. But if someone shows you proof against the scholar you respect, and yet you follow him blindly, that is taklid. The taklid we can only do is of Allah and His Rasul. Bas. Atiullah, atiur Rasul. Bas. No one else. Simple. Simple formula. Now some people come and tell me, Brother Sakir, you talk said, don't make sex. But didn't the prophet said there will be seven three sects? I said yes. The prophet said there will be. Prophet didn't say you should make. Allah says don't make. But prophet knew even though Allah says don't make sex, the Muslims are bound to make. So he predicted there will be. He didn't say you should make. And if you read the Sai Hadith of Abu Dawud, Hadith number four five seven nine and Hadith number four five eight zero. It says that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the Jews were divided into 71 or 72 sects, the Christians were divided into 71 or 72 sects, and the Muslims will be divided into 73 sects. There's a hadith of Tirmidhi, hadith number 131, as well as the hadith of Tirmidhi, hadith number 2643, where the Prophet said that the Bani Israel, the Jews and the Christians, they were divided into 72 sects. But my ummah will be divided into 73 sects. All will go to hell except one. So the companions asked, Who are they? The Prophet said, Those that belong to me and my companions. The Prophet said, There will be 73 sects. All will go to hell except one. Those that belong to me and my companions. And the other in the hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, hadith number 2652, the Prophet said, The best of the people are those of my time, means the companions, the sahabas. After that, the next generation. After that, the next generation. The Prophet said, The best people are those who are of my generation, the Sahabas. After that, the next generation, the Tabayin. After that, the next generation, Tabe Tabayin. Finish. So if you have to take anything, you have to take from the generation of the Prophet, the companions, the next generation, Tabayin and Tabe Tabayin. That's it. Three generations. This we call as the salaf e -Salihin. The righteous predecessors, predecessors, or the righteous forefathers. Salaf means predecessor, forefather. So in the Sharia, in the Islamic ruling, the highest authority, there are four categories. The highest authority is the Quran, is Allah's word. If you want to find something, if it's not there in the Quran, you go to the next source that is the hadith, the Sai hadith, the saying of the Prophet. In the saying of the Prophet, the commandment of the Prophet, the call, carries more weight than the actions of the Prophet. So if the commandment and the actions contradict, the commandment carries weight. The third source is the Sahabas, Ijma, the three generations. Sabas, Tain and Tabetain. The Ijma of these people, of the Saba, carries more weight than the individual opinion of the Saba. Then, Tain, Tabetain. And the last source is the Qiyas, 
if you don't find in any top three sources in the Quran, in the Hadith, in the lifestyle of the Sahaba, the Ta'in and the Bata'in, then you can use Qiyas, analogy, deduction. So Sharia on four things broadly, the Quran, the Hadith. No Sai Hadith will contradict the Quran. Quran number one. Then comes Sai Hadith. In the Sai Hadith, call carries more weight than the Amal. The commandment carries more weight than the action. Then the lifestyle of the three generations, Sabas, Ta'in, Tabetain, Ijma carries more weight than individual opinion. Then comes the Qiyas. So this is how we should follow. We should follow Quran and the Sunnah. But now all the groups say we follow Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah. Everyone, no one says he does not follow Quran and Sunnah. So how should the Quran and Sunnah be followed? The way the Prophet and the Sahaba understood. The way the three generations, the Sahaba said, Allah the Rasul said, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best generation is my generation. Then the next, then the next. So if there is difference of opinion in how to understand a verse of the Quran, we have to see how did the Sahaba understand it. If you don't find in that, then the next generation, Tabayin. If you don't find in that, then the next generation, Tabay Tabayin. This is how you follow. Because many verses of the Quran, for example, the word Masa has got two meanings sexual touch, physical touch. When you go to the Hadith, you come to know it is sexual touch, not physical touch. Easy. Similarly, when there is any difference of opinion in understanding any verse of the Quran, you have to understand according. If there are any other verses, commentary of the Quran, Quran is the best. If not, go to the Sahih Hadith of the Prophet. If you don't find there, in the lifestyle of the Sahabas, the Tabayin, the Tabi Tabayin. Finish. So, for proof, for Hujjah in understanding the Quran and the Sahih Hadith, you have to follow it according to Allah, His Rasul, and the Salaf Salihin. This is how we look at it. Otherwise, many verses of the Quran can mean two things. Like the verse in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, that those who are martyrs, they are not dead, they are alive. Some people say, oh, that means they are alive. That means you can talk to them. If the martyrs are alive, the shahid are alive, even the prophet is alive. Very good logic. But how did the Saba understood? Did the Saba consider the prophet to be alive? They buried him. They even did the Janadeh Salah. Even the martyrs, when they were killed in the battlefield, didn't the Sahabas read the Janadeh Salah? Can you read Janadeh Salah of a live person? No. So what the Quranic verse says, that when the enemies rejoice that we killed your people, they are alive within the year after, they are in benefit. It does not mean physically they are alive. If physically they are alive, why did the Sahabas bury them? So here, if you understand the Quranic verse, difficulty, two opinions, go to the Quran, the Sunnah, the way of the Sahaba and the Salaf is solving. And you get the reply. No difficulty. Easy. Don't have to be a scholar. Little bit jihad, little bit research. Little bit, not much. Now, there is another group of people. When I ask them, that, who are you? What are you? They say, I'm an Ali Hadith. So I say, what is the meaning of Ali Hadith? He said, we are the people of the Quran and the Sunnah, Quran and the Hadith. So I said, fine. Makes sense. So I tell them, okay, fine. If you want to say Ali Hadith, I would prefer calling myself Ali Sai Hadith. Because I only follow Quran and Sai Hadith. There are other Muslims who even follow Zaif Hadith and Modu Hadith. I am an Ali Sai Hadith. If you want to call me something. See, Ali Hadith means the other people, they follow Zaif Hadith, Modu Hadith, keeping hand below navel, no problem. So, they call themselves Ali Hadith. No, I am Ali Sai Hadith. If you want to call. So I ask these people, that brother, you call yourself Ali Hadith, means we are pakka following Quran 